what I usually will do is pick a place to start. And right now I'm going to start with this petal right here. I'm going to wet this petal first with clear water. This brush is a royal. Number 10 round, soft grip. I'm going to wet it quite wet because this is going to require some very, very gentle coloration. Very gentle. We still want to make this rose glow. I notice many times when I see people painting white objects and flowers they use a lot of gray but I don't really use that much gray I'm not going to do it today either even though I see a lot of gray on here but in my style I like a lot of color I think that it's been said of me that I see colors that others don't see so I'm trying to let this shine go away right now and since I am filming, I'm going to wet another area at the same time, but it won't be adjacent. Remember, you don't want to paint adjacent things. Carefully observe your reference photo at all times. You are not trying to make a photorealistic, at least I'm not, trying to make a photorealistic version of the picture. Now, in the reference picture, I see in this petal, I don't know if you can see it, there's just a hint of a warm color up in there. Just a hint. So I'm going to use just a hint of yellow ochre right there. And I'm going to put that in. Now you think that is just too much, don't you? And it is too much. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make my brush thirsty, rinse it out a little bit, then I'm going to just gently lighten and I see that this brush has left me a brush hair. Don't even worry about those. They're not going to affect your painting. They'll fall off after it's dry. If you're really worried about it, you can gently pick it up usually, naturally, not right now. <laughs> so anyway, I want this yellow to be there, but I don't want it to be very, very, very prominent. So I continue to lighten it and brighten it with my thirsty brush. Now, since I've done that, I'm going to re-wet this petal. I don't want a hard edge anywhere, and that's why I'm doing this. Now, what I see next there is some blue. So I'm going to go for my phthalo blue, remembering that I only want a tiny bit, just a tiny bit. Just you see that's too much. And I think that's the green, not the blue. Oh no, what am I going to do now? Well, what I'm going to do now get rid of it <laughs> very quickly this is a staining color well this just goes to show you that we all make mistakes and we have to figure out how to solve that problem right away before it gets to be a bigger problem okay it's gone pretty much I'm going to take a q-tip and just gently remove the rest of it. I forgot to show you a picture of the Q-tips. They are here. 
can barely, barely can see that. Now let's try that again. Bello blue. Now, it, there's a, a good bit of blue right here on the edge of this. And going across. Now what I'd like to do is again I'd like to soften this with my thirsty brush because when you're painting white the colors are extremely subtle, very light. Now I'm going to choose some of my red violet and I'm going to put it in right here and you say what? Why are you doing this? Well, it's to keep the yellow and the blue separate because I don't want green in there. Now, that's going to dry pretty light. I wanted it to be a very subtle gradation out to the pure white and it has spread a little bit far so I'm going to come back with it. I really want that tip of that petal to be very white. After I'm done I'm going to erase that little W that you see there. Now I wet another area somewhere and I don't, oh here it is. I'm going to have to re-wet that because it's dried out a lot. But this does not hurt it to do this. We are wetting the, these petals because we want subtle, subtle, subtle colors and gradations. We don't want hard edges here. Now this petal I see, because of a uh, light bounce from the ground, we're going to have some yellow a good bit up in this area here. Coming on down. Coming on down. Again, I've got too much. so. I like to put too much and just gently lift it and soften it after I get it in there. Now the next thing that I see, I'm going to use again my red violet color because I want to separate my blue from my yellow. Back to my phthalo blue. Just a little bit here and here and here. Now, that looks like a big mess, doesn't it? Well, I'm going to take my thirsty brush again. It's clean, by the way. I've washed it out. And I'm going to gently pat all this together, bring this all together, and make sure that it's not too bright. It also creates, when you do it this way, a rainbow iridescent effect. It is still too bright. I still want it even lighter than this. 
so I'm gently, gently re-wetting and softening this area. So as you can barely even see what I have done. Always remembering that I want to keep this white. 